Good morning, everyone. Dr. C.J. Adams, Dr. Goddess on Love and Life, coming at you from Houston, Texas today, and working on some secret stuff, which hopefully you'll be hearing about in the near future. But shh, for now, it's a mystery. I'm coming today to talk to you about Take Me to Church. How many of us grew up in church? How many of us grew up in some religious institution, some conventional thought process, and it became part of our core social experience? So recently, the song by Hozier, Take Me to Church, has been uh, going through my head, and I keep hearing it over and over, and one of the lines is, um, my, something about my lover is the laugh at a funeral. Right? How inappropriate is that? And yet, how true is it that we can't be honestly and truly ourselves in so many environments? And perhaps church is one of those. And by church, I don't just mean the Christian church. I mean the synagogues. I mean the uh, pagan ritual rites. Anywhere that we religiously adhere to a belief system at the expense of authenticity. Hear that again. A belief system at the expense of authenticity. If what you say and do is in alignment with your core and with who you are and with how you see the world, then follow that path to the truth of your magnificence. But if you're being taught anything by anyone, including me, please, if you ever hear anything from me and it does not resonate with the depth of your soul, throw it out with the morning trash. What is the value of church? Really, the value of church is community. I grew up in the Southern Baptist tradition, and so I've, about uh, the first or second Sunday of every month, there was a potluck, and um, everyone brought food, and we sat down, and we chattered as we ate this amazing food. There were summer events. There were evening concerts. When someone was in need, there was a call out to the community, and the community gathered around and met that need as best they could. When I started to morph my belief system out of Christianity, and let me say that I didn't morph out of Christianity, I morphed beyond Christianity. I love the teachings that I grew up with. Those teachings that taught me how to love like Jesus loved. Those teachings that taught me that we are all the children of God. There are teachings that I don't resonate with, that aren't part of my core soul, and I grew beyond those. And I grew into a system that I call my system of knowing. Well, as I began to make those transitions, a sad thing happened in my life, and that is that I began to lose friends. I began to lose loved ones. And the things that I would begin to say that were my truth, that were my awareness of life in the moment, became challenged and became a barrier between me and my brothers and sisters. And so I felt isolated. I felt alone. I felt lonely so often. And the only thing that kept me from really totally... Um, becoming disabled by the distance within my community is that I felt the vast divine community. I felt the angels. I felt the beings, the fairies, the unicorns, right? I felt all that is beyond that which is seen. And that sustained me. But let me tell you, that was not enough. I needed the divine to have arms and legs and a mouth to speak to me. And it took me a little while to find my community, to build my tribe. Now I am incredibly blessed. I have a tribe that spans the whole globe and goes across belief systems, goes across color systems, goes across gender issues, goes across sexual issues. And um, it's incredibly rainbow diverse. But man, when I made that journey into new transition, I felt so alone. And so I want to offer three pieces of beautiful, I hope you'll consider them beautiful advice on how to navigate the transition of your morphing belief system. One is always be authentic. Any relationship you create in inauthenticity is going to be founded on a lie. How long are you going to sustain that lie? So be yourself. 
those people who will resonate with you will come to you. They will find your way. Well, I've been here in Houston. I've made new friends. I've been hugging up on people and I've been loving them and I've been me and they've been themselves and I have just been in pure heaven watching all of this. In case you guys are wondering what I'm looking at, there are lizards everywhere and I'm not used to that. So they got my attention, right? That's part of being authentic. I'm not fully 100% here with you because I'm watching to make sure my environment's safe. Eek! The reality is that's what we do as we're navigating into a new world, right? If you're coming out of a belief system or if you're morphing beyond a belief system, then you're going into the new world, right? You're going into the new world of awareness and love and it's time to find those that you could play with. I wish I could turn my camera around right now so you could see these little uh, uh, lizards that are chasing each other, right? There was one and now there are two and they're playing together and that's really what has to happen as we morph. We are one, and then we find another who can believe with us, and then another, and we turn that in. Now, what if we began to collect those people that believe with us and create a community? We create a community on Facebook. We create a community uh, at Starbucks or at some coffee house. We created opportunities to get together and just speak to each other the realizations we are having in the moment, the ways we are expanding. Because here's the second thing. You must speak out where you are and what your truth is in this moment. And I say your truth is in this moment because guaranteed it's going to change, right? Where I was a year ago is not where I am today. Where I was a week ago is not where I am today. So I have to speak out my truth of today to make room for my truths of tomorrow to have the building blocks in place. And what that does is that feeds the universe. And this is, I'm open to receiving others who share similar voice, share similar heart. So be authentic, speak out your truth. And the third is be willing to walk in your vulnerability. See, here's the reality. The more authentic and the more vulnerable we are, the more we can connect with others. But here's the thing, we see vulnerability as being afraid. Uh, I'm sorry, of be, as being at risk, as being vulnerable, and so we're afraid of it. The reality is, at my most vulnerable, I'm at my strongest. Because if I share all of me with you, you have nothing, absolutely nothing you can reveal to harm me. I tell people I took all my, my skeletons out of the closet and I've danced with them now. Right? If I'm on the public stage, there's nothing anyone's going to be able to say that the whole world probably doesn't know because I've been willing to be vulnerable and intimate with anyone around me so that I don't have to worry about what's in my closet that might come out. Right? I own it. It's all part of me. Open up. Be willing. And be willing to be a little sacrilegious. Right? The song, Take Me to Church. Oh my gosh, when I saw the video, it was heart-wrenching for me. Right? It's... um a play on a past, our past of discrimination against peoples of various kinds, and it tore my heart apart. And what it did was also restore my faith in love and in the world. Because basically what it's saying through its quote-unquote sacrilegious wor words is, can you accept me? Can you accept me in your church? Or do I need to bow before your lies? To me, a lie is anything that stands between me and love. Anything that stands between me and love. All right, my beloved ones, celebrate your magnificence today. Get out in the sunshine. Hopefully you have sunshine in your area. And uh, shine that light that is you. Find your church. Find that place where you have community, where you have the opportunity to speak your truth, your tribe, your love zone, and more than anything, remember we're one. I love you.